Um, yeah, so my name is Richard. Uh, I'm the product guy at Nostra. Um, and uh, we're super happy to be here, the first uh, StarkNet CC in Lisbon. So uh, yeah, super happy. Um, I want to talk to you about growing DeFi to the next one billion. It's quite a big number, quite clickbaity. Um, but you know, hopefully it uh, gets you interested. Um, cool. Okay, um, cool. So let me just start off with a quick uh, questionnaire, survey. Does anyone like trivia? Anybody? Yeah? Okay, all right, cool. So let's talk about where we are. Oh, no, wrong way. This way. Eight billion. Any takers, what that means? What number is that? Anybody? People. People, yes. Yeah, world population. I was hoping someone was going to say, or thinking someone was going to say StarkNet valuation or StarkWay valuation on their last round, but yeah, you're right. That's uh, the world population. Uh, next number, five billion. Anybody? What's that? Accounts? What's that? People with smartphones, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, so it's the amount of internet users in the world. Okay, all right, nice. We're getting, getting better at this. Uh, next number, 320 million. Any takers? Might be a prize. No? Okay. 320 million, apparently, crypto users in the world. Okay. Cool. Education. Next number. Five million. It's the last one. Any takers on this one? DeFi users. What a smart man. Get paid the big bucks. All right. Yep. Uh, that's the amount of DeFi users, apparently, that we have, um, and this is the proxies, you know, there's inaccuracies to it, but um, this is a common number uh, that people believe from unique addresses that are interacted with uh, DeFi applications like Uniswap, et cetera, right? So that's where we are. There's a, there's a long way between 8 billion and 5 million, right? Cool. And what's interesting is that this stat if you see the amount of DeFi user growth, it's plateaued. Um, probably around the peak of, uh, of Bitcoin price. And it's no surprise there, I guess, right? You know, um, number goes up, everyone's interested. Number goes down, eh, not so much. And so, um, you know, I'm going to talk about how we might perhaps change this. Uh, what's, another thing that's interesting is uh, the amount of awareness. So there was a um, crypto survey, or a survey done asking people, about 4,400 people, if they own crypto and if they've heard of DeFi. And interestingly enough, you've got in the bottom there, 77% of people own crypto of this 4,400 sample set, and only 31% have heard of DeFi. So it just goes to show that gap and that chasm between people that have maybe interacted with Coinbase versus a Uniswap. Again, a long way to go. So, question that we might think about is like, why DeFi? Why do people choose DeFi over crypto? What's the promised land that we have and that we're working on? Um, well, a good couple of things come to mind. The global financial crisis, PTSD. I don't know if anyone's old enough to remember that, but um, I still remember times where people were lining outside of banks, some from the UK, and there was Northern Rock, which was one of them, um, and they were trying to get their money. They're like, oh my goodness, you know, my savings. Um, and so, you know, in 2009, you know, Bitcoin was, 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 was born, 2008, and self-sovereignty was like a, a concept, you know? Nobody should have my ownership over my assets. Um, why DeFi? Permissionless, okay? So that five billion amount of people that have access to the internet, they should have access to any DeFi application or financial application they want to. And so if you have an internet connection, you can access any uh, financial application, right? There's no discrimination there. Uh, transparency, so this is the thing about banks, you know, shadow banking or, you know, um, cooking the books, uh, perhaps, in, in the dark world of TradFi. Um, blockchain is a public ledger, it's transparent. So it has a pros, but it also has its cons. Uh, censorship resistant, this is a big thing that's come up recently with OFAC, Tornado Cash. Um, you know, who wants the government to just turn around and say, you know, your assets are mine, or 
don't deal with this person. So there's a, there's a theme there. Faster, better, cheaper. There's a question mark there. I don't think we quite have got there yet. But this is, I think, what we can all agree on is that we're working towards. Um, and in higher rewards, I think the perceived thing about DeFi is it's a high risk thing. Your keys, your coin, lose your keys, lose your coin. Um, I think, you know, with DeFi Summer and the, the big uh, interest has come from like the gains that have been made, the speculation, etc. So with the high risk comes high reward. But maybe that would change in the future. Okay, so let's talk about why not DeFi. Um, so on Ethereum, uh, I take it people have interacted with Ethereum 100% here, I guess. It's expensive, right? In the peak, I've paid you know a couple of hundred dollars for a transaction. Crazy stuff, right? When you think about it. I don't know if anyone's used that app before, WTF, gas, or whatever it is, and you see how much money you've spent on gas, and it's, it's an interesting number. Um, it's slow. I think it's, you know, if talking about mainnet specifically, Ethereum, um, it doesn't scale, right? Uh, 30 transactions per second is the reason why StockNet is here and others. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's a common problem in the market. Uh, complicated UX, I think, uh, in regards to clicking transactions and then there's pop-ups coming up, uh, I think there's, there's a long way to go. It's not feature parity with the likes of FinTech. Exploits, um, th 3 billion, I think, has been the number this year of exploits, of DeFi hacks and exploits, it's a big number. And when this is in the news, people are going to think, oh, damn, that's risky. I don't want to do that. I'll keep my money in the bank. So this is you know, reasons why people choose not to to play with DeFi. Uh, again, keys, not your keys, not your coin. The other one there is privacy. So in the same way we have transparency as a, as a, as a pro, as a benefit, um, not everybody's comfortable with having their, all their transactions on the blockchain. Like, you know, I'm going to look at your address and say, oh, yeah, you're, holding a, you're hodling some doge or something like that. So it's, not everybody's comfortable with that. Um, and I think with all of this, we haven't got IRL integration. We don't really integrate. Like, you can't click and pay with um, Ethereum or Bitcoin. It's not that easy. Not everywhere, anyway. It's coming, but it's not everywhere. So those are reasons why maybe people might not choose to use DeFi. So we're building on StarkNet. We're super, super excited about the prospects of StarkNet. And these are the, some of the reasons why. So some of the reasons why perhaps uh, you know, people might not choose to do DeFi, we see StarkNet as helping to answer that question. Um, and that's the reason, you know, it gives us a strong feature set. So in the future, we expect it to be cheaper, faster. Um, the complicated UX, I think it's been um, sort of covered ad nauseum, but account abstraction, I think, is a, is a game changer, um, where you can start sort of having session keys and, and multi-core giving you one-click DeFi. Um, exploits. You know, there's scope to reduce, similar to what um, Motti said earlier with uh, the Bravos uh, application, and Argent wrote about this as well, just removing that, that, um, that scope of exploits, right? Being more secure, less hacks. If that number goes down, the trust goes up. Um, keys, social recovery. Again, not your keys, not your coin. But if maybe my, my mum can hold my keys and I can like, give her a call and say, hey, you know, <laughs> It was a drunk night. There's a, quite a lot to, to drink. Um, can you just restore my wallet? That would be great. Um, privacy. I think uh, privacy should be an opt-in or opt-out thing. And I think with layer freeze, we'll, we'll hopefully get there and, and see that um, more often. And with all the above, we expect there to be more integrations with Web3 and Web2. And this is, uh, this is the prospects in the next five, 10 years that we have to see for DeFi. Cool. All right. So for this little uh, section here, I'll just talk about Nostra and what we're, what we're doing and how we're thinking about DeFi um, and what we're building, okay? So Nostra has uh, three products. We have a money market. Uh, we're building a stable coin, over collateralized. It's not Luna. Um, and we're building a Nostra swap. So it's a stable coin DEX, okay? So these three products is a what we call the liquidity layer. And that's, uh, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, if you think about Ethereum, we see that as the security layer, okay? A 
attack on Ethereum is pretty expensive, and yeah, can't, it's not easy to do. So that's, that's the query layer. If you think about StarkNet, we see that as the scalability layer, okay? Faster, cheaper, right? That gives a scale. It, it would allow us to get to X TPS, right? And then we bring in Nostra as the liquidity layer. Connecting with DeFi, gaming, real world. And it gives you that ability to tap into liquidity functions. Borrow, lend, mint your stablecoin, swap. So these core liquidity functions is what we're trying to build on a scalable platform like StarkNet. Um, just to quickly go down the uh, free products, won't take too long, I'm on this too much, but uh, the money market is a lit, enables you to lend and borrow your assets. So something, that's the first thing that we thought. We need to build a primitive layer of DeFi to remove dependencies of any, any, anybody else and give us that freedom, that degrees of freedom. And so uh, with that, we have tokenized assets and debts, sub accounts for risk management. So anybody who opens a um, or interacts with Nostra can have 256 sub accounts for you to manage your own risk. Um, asset class tiers, to, again, different tokens, different liquidity, different volatility and risk. So we give each asset their own tier and flash loans. Um, it's, not purely just, it's not purely just flash loans, it's also deferred liquidity, which enables you to do a bit more than that. Than that. Um, Uno, I think um, there's a big stable coin war happening, right? I think it's clear that it's one of the biggest product market fits of DeFi and one of the biggest opportunities. And so we thought, well, you know, we think we're, StarkNet gives us the right environment to make it a hell of a lot better and integrate that with real world. So it's going to be USD pegged, backed by ETH, um, censorship resistant, all that. Those are the considerations that we've, we've, um, we was talking about and discussing. Over collateralized, um, which I think is battle tested and you know, has built trust over, over, over this time. Um, decentralized, so it would be immutable, and earn to mint, which is an interesting thing. So um, the ETH that's used as collateral to mint Uno will be deployed in our money market. And so as you mint, or the minters will earn some yield in the back end, right? So that gives us some productivity and allows your assets to be used and your earning yield, your collateralization ratio going increasing over time, all else being equal. Cool. All right. And then the final one is Nostra Swap. So of course we have a stable coin. Where do we want it to be traded? Uh, a stable coin DEX in the most capital efficient way. So you, you want to swap it with USDC, DAI, et cetera. That needs to be enabled with deep liquidity to have minimal slippage. And so we thought, we'll build Nostra Swap. Why not? Um, and that together creates the liquidity layer. Cool, right? Amazing. All right, tell your friends. OK. Um, where's next? Hold on. Sorry. OK. So the reason why you're here is how one billion? How are we going to get there? Um, and I don't think no one product is going to do it alone. Um, it's a collective effort. We're all working to build a better future, right? Um, but we can take some perhaps anal analogies from fintech. And one, one of those is PayPal, which I quite like. Um, so experiment to find product market fit. Uh, one story I like to refer to is PayPal, right? So when they first launched, um, they, they wanted to launch a digital currency in like the 90s. And what they used to, what they, the device that they chose was PDAs. I don't know if you remember PDAs, but they're like Palm Pilots. It's very old things like a pager almost. Um, and so people who have these two devices can send money between each other but they didn't really get traction, right? Not everybody had a PDA. So then they switched to email-based, right? So anybody with an email can then send money and send payments. And that's when they found product market fit, they saw traction, and they started to, to go. And so that, it's that experimentation mentality is where, where we all are. We don't know what the final form's gonna be, but I think that's what's gonna get, a, gonna get us there. Uh, better use acquisition. Continuing on from the PayPal example, so when they found their product market fit with emails um, as an account-based um, um, mechanism, 
um, they then got very aggressive on user acquisition. So I could get $10 for signing up, but also if I refer any one of you, I get $10 as well. And they was, they was having a very high burn with this. I think they spent like 60 to 90 million. But it was that user acquisition that they was going doubling down on and tripling down on. I think us today in, in crypto, there's a lot of airdrop hunters, but that's just the current population that we have. We need to think about how to onboard non-DeFi users into DeFi and, and reward those guys. And perhaps with decentralized ID, we can get better at that. Um, One-click DeFi. So another interesting story here is um, the one-click ordering was patented by Amazon. In 1999, they launched a patent. And that patent ran out in 2017. And so that was like their, 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 you know, one of their secret sources, okay? Um, and, you know, you know, of course, you know the success of Amazon. But I think one-click DeFi is a game changer. We don't want to have different pop-ups coming up. It should be mobile first. And I think um, having multi-core um, and these, these feature set that, that StarkNet provides will enable us to get there. Uh, ah, here you go. More Web2 and Web3 integrations. I would like to see a day where I can click on um, a product on Amazon or Shopify and pay with Bravos or pay with Argent. And it's happening slowly, but I think this, this is a game changer because how many times do we... Um, you, you can't use crypto, all right? You can use it in inside and send money to each other or send crypto, but you can't use it in the real world. I think we need to see more of this, and we are. Um, social DeFi as well is interesting. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever used Venmo. Um, it's quite an American thing. But um, having this social interaction with finance is, is quite an interesting paradigm and an interesting vector. Um, and I think perhaps we can play around with that a bit more, especially on the public ledger. Cool. All right. So when? When one billion? When? When? OK. Well. Taking a look at this, um, we can see there at the top, we have TikTok, Instagram, and it took them about 5, 10, 15 years, right? It took them about 5, 10, 15 years to get to 1 billion. And that's not 1 billion users, that's 1 billion monthly active users. So, you know, of course, it's, the number should be, should be higher um, in ultimate users. But it's going to take time. It's still early, right? And we can see that now. We're all in this room, and I'm sure in three years' time, uh, we won't be able to fit in such a such a small tent. Um, but yeah, I think it's very promising, but 10 years, we have to, we have to wait. Patience. Cool. All right. So yeah, that was it. Um, thanks, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you want to join the familiar, um, that's, our, that's our QR code, uh, Discord, super um, great community by our marketing guru, Tony. Um, and then follow us on Twitter. And uh, if you want to connect, uh, connect with me on Twitter as well. Love to chat DeFi. So yeah, uh, thank you all for listening and uh, yeah, catch you later.